demonstrator in stamping up demonstrator in southern Tasmania just forgive me for a minute while a few people sign on I'm actually just going to make sure that everything is fine there it seems to be working sign on I'm well, just... okay that sounds like that's my voice as much as you want to hear that first thing in the morning okay so it looks like everything's fine there got a few people popping on which is lovely so good morning and lovely to see you on I'm going to watch the chat as it comes through please pop on tell me where you're watching from and uh, say hi I'm a little bit later today than my normal midweek crafting I sat down for a cup of coffee this morning and thought ah oh, don't have anything else left to do this week because we had a wonderful session I think because we had a wonderful session last night with um, some wonderful crafters making cards and I thought that was the end of my week and I thought hang on it's only Wednesday I've still got midweek Wednesday to go so anyway then I had to decide what we were going to do and then I had to once I decided what I had to do I had to do some fussy cutting which you'll see in a moment um, and I wanted to get that done before I came on because I um, didn't want you to have to sit there and watch me fussy cut for three quarters of an hour which probably wouldn't have been much fun at all so I'm going to make a couple of alternatives with this wonderful kit that um, I recently purchased I don't know there was something about it that I just that the cards that are and the colors that I just find really appealing and I realize that that's sort of a bit of a pun play on words because there's a lot of orange peel in this so I do find it quite um, it attracts me I'll put it that way without the puns uh, just the colors and the, the the design it's just really cute I don't know that it's a particularly appropriate Christmas card for here in Australia um, I suppose we people do make mulled wine and stuff in the winter but not so much in some in um, Christmas which at Christmas time which is actually a a, win, a, a summer event obviously for our midsummer so it'd probably be more appropriate if it had a I don't know a prawn cocktail or a, a tropical martini or something on the front there rather than the components of a mulled wine or a, a spiced wine but anyway so let's uh, get making our alternatives anyway as much as I say it's not really appropriate for Australian summer Christmas it's still a very lovely um, card to use you could probably use it for any number of things this is the kit and I've already had quite a bit out of it so I'll just show you what's in there you get the stamp set which would be very handy just for general Christmas pres uh, um, Christmas um, sentiments there's lots of just sort of general Christmassy ones there you get a little potty poppy parade ink spot which I haven't opened I've used my main poppy parade you get your sentiment boxes all cut it's sort of like a, a sort of a leany rectangle I, I used to know what the name of a leany rectangle was I want to say romba but maybe not that just could be my high school um, geog uh, geography coming to four you get some stickers these ones are actually stickers so you can peel those off and stick them without having to use glue you get 12 cards now a bit different to our normal kits all 12 cards are meant to be the same they're the same card um, you just make them up um, as per the same design which is why I suppose I was intrigued to make some alternatives you get envelopes for all 12 which are really nice I quite like the little corner there you could use that on a card too if you wanted to cut it about you get some twine some linen twine for the use and you get some various cutouts and die cuts and things like that and you get a block so another block for the collection which would be really handy and some instructions there now I'm not going to make the standard card I've already made it and I love it but I'm going to make the alternatives today so the um, instructions are lovely and simple as usual to make the standard card so if that's what you want to do just uh, jump on and grab the kit but anyway so that's the that's the standard card so we'll keep that one aside the alternates I'm going to make and I do need all these things so I'll leave them in the box for the moment so they don't go missing the alternatives that I'm going to make um, I've shown one of them at least on my um, page and that's this um, a book bind card which um, I was told it was well and truly time for me to to do it <coughs> excuse me I got dry throat uh, well and truly time for me to do another book bind card so I'm going to make this one with you today excuse me I had a drink of water so we'll do this one and we'll also do one that I prepared for our special session last night that I had with the ladies using the 
the Funfold template that we all used when we were making our cards together and this sort of double fold one here. We're going to make this one as well today. Okay, so as you can see, lots of fussy cutting there where I've cut out the the, the pine cones and the, the um, I'm assuming it's rosemary and the berries and things as well. So, um, yeah, we'll get making for those. Um, we might as well make the um, book bind card first because that's what I've grabbed. So there we go. So what I've actually done, I've grabbed the the card from the kit. So this sort of card, which normally you'd fold in half and then add the various bits to as per the instructions. Um, but what I've actually done is I have fussy cut the elements from the card. So here we are. I've cut out the rosemary and the pine cones and the berries and some of the leaves and things. So I've got most of the images from the card front there. Uh, and I've left the back of the card. So this is just the back, just what would have been the back of the card um, if you'd made it as as you um, as per the instructions. And I'm actually going to um, cut that, use that as as the layers, some of the layers on the card so we don't waste it. And just to give it a bit of effect, I'm going to run it through my timber embossing folder just to give it that bit of just a bit more interest to it. And because it is white on the back so you do it does have like it's like using white core um, design uh, cardstock you do get that white slight white trim to it because it doesn't matter too much okay so let's get making and then we can I'll bring in the embossing folder I'm actually going to emboss the back of the other card as well so I might do both of them at the same time okay so my standard bookbind card is a 11 inch by 4 inch piece of cardstock I've scored it first of all at four inches and then at a at five and a half. So it folds in half with that little extra score there. And that little little area there is what we're going to seal that to um, to create the, the spine of our book bind. Not many people on today. It's a bit strange. I am going to my Facebook, which is weird. I suppose I... Um, I did uh, advertise this one a little bit late, so maybe people didn't realise I was going to go live. Okay, so let's get, so I've got um, a red here, a red cardstock. Now I I think in my original I used Poppy Parade and I think that's the red that they say goes with the card. I have just grabbed a, stand, a, a random scrap of red cardstock here and I think I've actually grabbed the Sweet Saw by sweet sorbet sweet sorbet by accident but it's just they're very close to each other so I didn't think that it unless I owned up to it which there you go now I have owned up to it I didn't think anyone would notice too much so this little part here is a four inches wide and four inches long so this little piece of red cardstock is um three and three quarters square so it fits just in there with the larger of my usual borders here we are then I've got this one here which is uh, three and three quarters by one and a quarter and it's going to sit on the spine just like that so you've got the two areas there And then I've got another three and three quarters piece of the red. Poppy Parade or Sweet Sorbet, whichever way you fall, whichever you've got to, at hand. I like to use my scraps. I feel like I've achieved something if I can reduce, if I can make a whole card using just scraps from my scrap box. I sort of feel like I've achieved something with my day. Okay, so I've popped that. To on the right hand edge of the inside of the card I'm doing it slightly out of order because I want to be able to pop that I've got to pop that through the embossing folder before I can use it and that's a uh, three and three quarters three and five eighths square piece of basic white there and that's for our inside our personal message there so you can see that's just there's the five and a half score there and it's just on the right hand. So when we actually seal that down, um, that'll be the inside of the card, that, that square section there. Okay, right, we need now to, I've put it off as long as I can. I do actually need to bring in my embossing folder 
this is the uh, what did I use the timber one uh, it uses my big embossing machine so I'm going to have to bring that in just bear with me for a second I don't want to lose any of my little fussy cut things since I went to so much trouble so I've got the back of the one card that I'd fussy cut and I'm going to also emboss the back of the second one if I can find it where did you put it Julian Ink. I'll leave it in the box no I've got, I should have two backs come on come on where are you Oh, golly me, where is it? Okay, we're going to think on our feet here and I'll get the embossing folder and we'll. I might have to use a second card if I can't find that, which is a shame because I don't want to waste a second card back. But if I can't find it, I can't find it. Oh, well. Let's do this one first. I'm sure it'll pop up somewhere. Maybe I'll bring that back in a second. So I've got my timber embossing folder you can see there. Uh, I'll grab my embossing plate. I think once I clear things from here, I'll probably find the second one. I'm going to emboss it so that it runs that way, the a sort of horizontal grain. So I need to pop it through like that. through like that that you can't see but there we are so I've popped it into the embossing folder and I'll just pop that through as I say I would have done both of them at the same time but I can't find the second one that's okay I may have popped it in my scrap box when I was tidying up I'll check there in a second okay so I'm just going to leave that there because I'm going to need that for the second card there we go so there we are, we have the, this is just the card back from the kit and I've just popped that through the embossing folder. Now I'll cut that down to size. Grab my trimmer. And so we're going to need a piece to fit on that piece and a piece to fit on there. So I'm going to need it was three and three quarters, three and five eighths square. I'll take it that way, three and five eighths that way. And I'll need a square one, so three and five eighths square. And then I'll need a little one for the spine, which will be one and one and a half, one, one and eighth. Okay, so there's our pieces that we need to complete our card. We haven't really wasted a lot of that card at all. We've used most of it, which is the aim of the game. Okay, so I'm going to pop that over my red, sweet sorbet, poppy parade, whatever it's going to be. And it just adds a real nice sort of woody, earthy sort of organic feel to this one if you can see that and then I'm going to put the little strip here then I'm going to as usual with these cards I'm going to pop a bit of ribbon in that um, book spine area bound area and I'm going to stick with the colors I'm going to use my open weave my ev evening evergreen open weave Eek. So I'll grab it. And these you've seen, guys have seen me do this, these book wine folds so many times. You could probably do, thank you, Deb. Uh, you, you could probably do them in your sleep. I was thinking of it as the feature card for our next um, Come Craft With Me session. But I thought maybe that was a bit, could be a bit obvious. I want to do something a little bit different together. Uh, I'll pop that double sided tape there. Jan's 
you're at physio watching us, are you, Jen? Or obviously not in the, the on the table, one would hope, unless they let you watch while they manipulate you, which I suppose would take your mind off it, wouldn't it? Or just wrap the ribbon around the spine and seal it with the double-sided tape, so around like that. And then I can just seal that little section closed and that is our our book bind fold there i'll come back later and do the bow later when i'm feeling lucky so let's actually decorate this bit now so as i mentioned i have fussy cut all the images just about from the card front and some pieces of it are fussier cut than others um, so I knew I wanted to see some of those pieces of rosemary sort of all singly but I also knew that down this end was going to be covered so yeah you sort of selectively fussy cut where you think you're going to actually be needing to see the detail so I'm going to pop these two so these are the two parts of the card the same card front I'm going to overlap them with each other so that the two pine cones you can the two back pine cones you can sort of see them nestled behind so it looks like they're in a big bunch so I'm going to pop them on like that so I might glue them I might glue them together first so that I can position them together on the card yeah. Just like that. So it just looks like a big lump of pine cones and rosemary now. Okay, so I might pop those. I'm going to pop those on the card front like this. Okay, then I'm going to grab the, um, I'm also going to grab the beautiful oranges. So there's a small orange that's a sticker. So I'm going to use that. Uh, and the little cinnamon, I assume they're sort of like cinnamon sticks, they sort of end on. And I'm going to grab a the stamp set, obviously, and a little sentiment box. They just pop out like that. They're just held in with little perforations. And I'm going to grab the big, there we go, the big die cuts as well. The big orange and this one. Oh, it's not cinnamon. It must be star anise. The other one is star anise and the cinnamon sticks are there as well. So there you go. Obviously, I'm not a big mould, whatever this is supposed to be, spiced cinnamon-y stuff. I'm not a big maker of that. Okay, so this big orange segment or half or slice i'm going to cut that in half so it looks like it's been sliced again for a drink or something so i'm only going to use half of it on the front tucked in up under there and then the sticker is going to pop up under there so i might stick them start sticking them on now i think i can do that fairly safely pop a bit of glue on the back of this one There we are. And I've got another sprig of rosemary, I'm assuming it is. I don't think it's pine cones. I'm going to put that just to give it a little bit of height over on the left hand side, just in there. So nothing goes to waste with this one. Okay. Could have glued them down a bit more, but I quite like the fact that they come up at you, you know, away from the, the design a bit. Okay, so then we'll grab our orange segment and just glue that on, or our orange half. Yeah, just love these colours.
and now our orange that's a sticker I'll bring that in pop that up under there It's coming together nicely. The orange really lifts it. Okay, so then we'll grab some of these stickers that are actually star anise and just fill in some gaps with those. One there. And then oh, I've got another little berry thing here, so I'll pop that there, just add a little bit more colour and stick that down here with another sticker. There we are. So as I say, nothing wasted there. Okay, so let's, um, let's, uh, let's, what are we doing now? No, no, I'll see. Ah, sentiment now. So I'm going to grab the little sentiment box, these little um, collapsed rectangle, and I'm going to pop that just across the front there like that. And I'm just going to, you could, uh, I think I'll just um, glue it on because I'd like to tuck those little berries over it so that it, you give a little, got a little bit of design sticking over it as well. So let's see, I'll use the stamp set, which I got out. So let's go... We've got celebrate the season, all is cosy and bright, may this holiday warm your heart. I might just use the celebrate the season again, it's the one I used the first time. Yeah, and I used evening evergreen on the first one but I think it actually needs a little bit more colour so I might go to the poppy parade and I'll use my poppy parade. Yeah, so I'll do the sentiment in the poppy parade rather than the green. Yeah, that needs re-inking that one, I think. Okay, grab some glue. And pop that on there. Okay. It's really nice. I think I really like that. Okay, and to give it a little bit of bling, I grabbed the in colour. Uh, opal rounds. So these are the in colours for 21-23. So they had the the um, evening evergreen in there. I'll grab my little thing. So I'm just going to use the evening evergreen ones and just pop those around as well. Just a little one. Okay. Oh, and I've got to do the bow. Oh, and the inside, that's what we have these for. And there's a little bit left over there, so I might pop that on as well. Just a little leaf that I'd cut. So I'll just cut, pop that on the front as well, just so it doesn't go to waste. And I'll do my ribbon, my bow I mean, because I've done my ribbon. Just loop that under and tie a little bow. You can leave the bow off if you like, but it's, I think it adds to the cut to the fold. Ladies from last night have been wondering whether my husband, what time my husband got home. It was during our Zoom. I was visited on a number of occasions by our dog, Ruby, who, when I 
organise the event I assumed would be keeping her father, well, my husband, not her father. Um, her father was another golden retriever, um, but uh, who would be he would be keeping her company, but um, he wasn't home. No, it was on his it was on his push bike, so I did say I was a wee bit worried about him when he rides home in the dark. Um, he did actually get home at about eight thirty, which was a little bit later than I would like on his push bike, um, but he was safe. He just had a big day at work. So yes, husband did get home safe. Although I suppose if he hadn't, I probably wouldn't be doing a live video today. So that makes a lot of sense. There you go. I told him that the craft ladies told him he was he was um, grounded and he had to be home at a reasonable hour from now on, especially when we're doing our crafting. Okay, so there's the front all done. I'll, I'll open it up. We'll put our cinnamon sticks and star of anise and the other half of our orange just in like like that just to carry that theme from the outside to the inside. It's quite a big decoration for the inside of quite a small card, but you know, that's fine. Okay, so that's the inside as well. So that's our first alternative. That's my first bookbind card for quite some time. So there you go. I'm back with my bookbind cards. Okay, so let's do the second one. Just might tidy up a wee bit and see if I can find that back to the card. So the second one is this one. Just clean up a bit that I, things I don't need. And things I do. No, I can't find it. No, I might have chucked it in my scraps box. Bear with me for a second. There's a whole lot of scraps, in which case I'm going to need them anyway because I'll have to cut. I'll have to cut. She says, just going, not that you can see me going through my scraps box, but I'm going to have to cut another piece of card if I can't find it. And I can't. Oh no, there it is. Ha ha. I did pop it in my scraps box, so I found it. Yay! So there we are. This is just the back of the second card that I've chopped around to um, to make this second alternative. Okay. Yay. Okay, so the second one is this one. So I don't know what you'd call it, like a double fold front card. We had lots of fun with this design yesterday. If you'd like last night, if you'd like to pop on and see what on my Facebook page and see what lovely designs the ladies came up with. I basically told them half of the measurements and um, and what they needed, but I didn't tell them what we were going to do. So yeah, it was fun. It was like a magical mystery tour or something anyway. Uh, okay, so I will show you what you need to do to make this one because this this one is um, it's all out in the open. Um, so we have a another piece of evening evergreen cardstock. This one is seven and a quarter by five and a half, and I've scored it at three. So what you get is you get the fold. It's a bit hard to tell, but you get the fold over, but you get a gap here of about an inch and a quarter. There we are. So that's sort of the highlight of that card, that part. Then you've got a, a smaller piece of um, the same coloured cardstock, and this is four and a half by three, and it's scored just an inch from the end there. So you've got another little thing there. So this tab here is where we pop the glue, and then we glue it on to form that other half of the of the fold. Okay, I'm going to keep them apart for the longest time because the colours are basically overlap with each other so again I've gone for the red and I'm pretty sure yes it is definitely sweet sorbet rather than poppy parade but let's just call it red so I've got red cardstock there so this one is for the inside so this is uh, just an eighth of an inch smaller so it's um it'd be four and an eighth by uh, five and three eighths this card's a little bit wider than normal because I had that inch to play with. So it's actually a four and a quarter inch wide card. 
Then I've got a, another panel of basic white, and this would be four inches by five and a quarter. I'll pop all the inf all the directions and all the cutting instructions on my website, so watch out for those over the next few days if you'd like to give these a go. So that's just that's just the inside. Pretty simple there. So for the front, I've got another panel of the red. So this one is again five and three eighths by it would be two and seven eighths. And that sits on the front. No ribbon to worry about with this one. Oh, not at this stage anyway. So we're safe. So our next Come Craft With Me session is the 17th of October. We do it at uh, 7.30 or we'll start at 7.30 um, and that'll be daylight savings times because we would have started daylight savings by then. So watch out for the event. Um, I've popped, did I pop it up this morning? I can't remember. Anyway, so watch out for the event and please um, keep an eye on what materials you're going to need and um, pop along, which would be fun to see everybody. We had uh, someone watching, we had Elsa from the Netherlands watching with us last night, which was fun. Okay, so that's our little piece with the one inch tag and I've popped another piece of sweet sorbet on the top of that one. So that's, um, that's our highlight colour again. Oh, you know what I've done? I've popped, <laughs> I should have popped that on there before I added the inside of the, the inside. I'm too busy chatting and not enough time crafting. So what I should have done, and I'll show you the original, is before I popped the white inside, I should have glued that little tab down so that the white would cover over the messiness of that little tab. That's okay. I'm going to have to do my plant take two is I'm going to have to feed that behind there so it's actually stuck to the back. Either that or replace the white. Oh, so I can do that. What I might do, thinking on my feet, apologies there. I'm going to glue that on as I should and I'm going to bring in a second white panel. So I've got glue on the back of our little tab there. I'm going to position it on the card so that it's central, so top and bottom central, and that the score lines up with the edge of the card. So there you can see it's lined up with the edge of the card and it's central and hopefully straight. Okay, so then because I've got that untidiness, we'll bring in a piece of white cardstock. And I only know because I've got a spare piece here, this is what should have happened in the first place. So I'm going to cover that untidiness with the white. And that, what did we say that was? Four by five and a quarter. So ignore that I've got an extra layer of white there. It shouldn't have, shouldn't have be there because that should be covering that over there. So you don't see that little tab. But that's okay. This one's just going to be a little bit thicker than than the usual. Just like that. There you go. Nobody would know. I won't tell if you don't. There we are. So when it closes, it closes over like that. Okay, so now that I managed to find the missing piece of this, I'm going to pop this again through my timber embossing folder. And again, I want it to run, this time I want it to run lengthways. I'll pop it through that way. that on the floor here we go so there we are so that's our embossed panel and I want to this time I just want to pop it on that back panel so I'll trim that down on that back flap 
So that was three, three, you know, so it's got to be two and three quarters wide and five and a quarter long. So it's going to sit just on there. Okay, so let's glue that down. Now you do notice that the timber embossing folder really sort of curls the paper, especially this card stock that we're using here because it's a little bit thinner than your normal card stock. So you have to be a bit careful that it glues down and stays flat. Okay. So there we are, so we've got that. Now we're going to cover this part. So what I've actually done with the card, and I'll show you, this is the original card from the box. I've chopped myself a piece of it, and I'll just align it so you can see which piece I've chopped. You can see this little part here is actually just that corner of the card. So what I wanted to do is grab a piece of the actual card and use it for one of my layers. And the reason I like to do that was because I wanted to keep some of these really nice gold dots in my design. So where we, if you fussy cut it completely, I sort of lost them. So with this one, I've cut just a piece, of, a piece of the card itself and that is going to pop on the front of that, just like that. So that's going to form part of my design with those little cute gold splatters as well. So no fussy cutting involved in that part of it. Okay, I need to get my original card so I don't go too far astray. Here we go. All right, so, but there is some fussy cutting here. So I've got the rest of that card design. So the, the part from, the, from down here, I've cut fussy cut that out. It's going to sit sort of diagonally, sort of forming a pattern down the diagonal there. So with the little pine cone and the leaves and things pointing to the bottom left hand corner. And then I'm going to grab one of the lovely um, orange segment stickers. Once I'm happy where I've got that, I'm going to pop the segment like in the middle so it sort of balances the two. Was this one was a little bit unbalanced. I wasn't quite happy with it, but I sort of want the same sort of foli amount of foliage sticking out either side of our orange segment. There we are. Yeah, I'm happier with that. It looks like it's in the centre of that massive foliage. There we go. Now Linda's saying she has no sound. Has anyone else got problems with, I would hope somebody would have said something prior to now about not having sound. Um, she's on YouTube by the looks of things. Who's watching on YouTube? Deb, you can obviously hear me. Um, well, unless the sound's just gone. Anyway, oh well, probably a blessing not listening to my voice sometimes. We're nearly finished, so we'll just plow on. Um, no, Deb can hear me and Judy can on Facebook, so it might be something wrong with um, Linda's. I have sound. Okay, it might be just something wrong with Linda's setup. Okay, so we'll just plow on and finish this one, even if it's by sign language for some people. So I'm going to grab, um, to finish this one off, I'm going to grab another sentiment box. or sentiment romba. I'm going to have to Google that now so I know what that I've men mentioned the shape correctly. Um, again, I'm going to, this time I'll swap to my evening evergreen and actually use that, which I'd popped it back backwards so I couldn't see the label, which wasn't good. I might just stick with our celebrate the season since I've got that already blocked up. There are lots of nice sentiments on this particular in this kit so just I've got this one on the block already so we'll use it 
So this for this particular design, this sentiment box is going to be a wee bit long. I know that already. So I'm going to have to trim a wee bit off the end of it. Um, so I'm going to pop the sentiment at the left hand end so that I can trim what I need to off the right hand end. So I'm just going to grab my scissors and just following following the angle of that end, I'm just going to chop it off, just a wee bit off. So it's the same shape, but a wee bit shorter. I'm going to pop that on our card as like this. And I'm just going to glue that on. And I haven't actually used any bling on this one because I think I left the gold little gold splatters, so I thought they would be bling enough. So I'm going to pop that on there. Seems a shame covering our beautiful orange segment. Here we are. So that's on there. I'm going to bring in those really cute little star anise. Just add those on. So one of them here. That's why I popped the sentiment on first because I want it to slightly overlap the sentiment. And then I'm going to pop one up in here. And here I've got a leaf that I didn't use, so I'll pop that there and pop the star anise over the top. So it's so good with these stickers, I haven't even had to use glue for part of that. So there we are, so that's the front of this one. So another alternative, um, another alternative to our card. I'm going to bring in another one of the little cinnamon star anise combos and I've got a half a orange peel a half an orange segment that I had and it dropped on the floor so we'll use this one I'm just going to use the same sort of configuration as I did on the first card and pop those down in the corner and then this one is also done so that's our original plus two alternatives for the cozy and bright kit if you want to grab this one it's in my in online store obviously the kits tend to be while stocks last so if you like the look of this one please don't wait too long I think it's 40 41 dollars Australian I have to jump don't don't quote me on that but I'll put a link to the store so if you really like this one and you like the alternatives that I've made, please, you can jump on and do that, get this as well. So there we are. So we've got that one there, which is our mystery double fold that you know, we featured last night in my Come Craft With Me. We've got our book bind, which always makes an appearance at least a couple of times a year. And this is the original from the actual kit, you following the instructions. So hopefully you like those. Um, yeah, and uh, give it a bit of a go. Um, the folds are really handy. I think once you've decided what fold to use, sometimes if you're lucky enough, the card will tend to just make itself from that, which we found was the case with our Come Craft With Me yesterday. Um, it was, uh, yeah, gave, gave the girls some instructions and off they went and they produced some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cards. Okay, so that's me for today. Wasn't too bad for two quite complicated cards. Um, have a great rest of your week and I will see you all again on probably Saturday for the weekend crafting session. So take care and I will see you all.